happy to be here today to make a, an exciting announcement that I'm very happy to make. Um, I've waited uh, just over two years uh, for this day. But I want to announce that starting Thursday, the 11th of May, we'll be bringing back our traffic division. Um, it'll be limited, smaller than it was before, but we'll have uh, 10 motorcycle officers, two officers in cars, and two sergeants on an afternoon shift uh, doing traffic full time in the city once again. Um, it's, it's a great day. It's a day that I've looked forward to for a long time, rolling the traffic division and some of the other uh, divisions we rolled into patrol back in uh, February of 21. It was a tough decision. Uh, the work that they do is very important, uh, but our precincts at the time were really struggling with staffing, and it was a move that I felt needed to be done. Um, I want to let people know we're not making this move out of abundance uh, or an, an excess of officers. Uh, this move, very important, uh, but also it will impact the precincts as well. But uh, some people will ask, well, why now? And for me, you know, we look at our staffing as far as trainees. We have 97 trainees right now in the police bureau. And that ranges from day one hires to people at the end of their phase five training or their 18 month probation. And with 97, it's really important that they get the opportunity to rotate through the traffic division, division as part of their rotations for training, uh, learn how to do DUI investigations, traffic investigations, and things of that nature. And also, we're coming into Rose Festival time frame. The folks behind me in our, in our traffic division are, uh, have a big lift when it comes to Rose Festival planning and taking part in activities. And I think right now is the time where we can actually uh, make this move, impact some of the driving behavior we've all witnessed in the city uh, for the better. And they will be out there visible, still doing police work, which is good. And uh, I just want to take this opportunity too, to thank all of them. Um, even though they've been doing patrol work uh, for the last two years, they've still maintained their certifications, done trainings, uh, maintained their, their motorcycles, and done a lot of great work that the city uh, so, so desperately needs. So I want to thank them and welcome them back to, uh, to a full-time traffic operation. And then I've got some members of the traffic division and the strategic resources division here to answer uh, some operational questions at the end as well. Thank you, Chief. Glad you could be here with us today. It's a pretty exciting day for, for all of us. I've been in the traffic division total for about 11 and a half years, and these last two years have been pretty difficult for those of us that have a huge passion for traffic enforcement and education, and we are super excited to bring back a portion of our division today. I wanted to add and build upon a few things that the Chief mentioned just now. Uh, yes, a full-time portion of the division will come back on May 11th, but also, for the second year in a row, we will be bringing back all of the traffic division, which includes quite a few more officers on motorcycles and cars for a one month period to help us with Rose Festival and different things. And so when they're not doing Rose Festival duties, parades and such, they'll be helping out with traffic enforcement, education, and uh, investigations as well. So we're excited to have them all back for a month and then get to keep our afternoon shift contingent for the indefinite future. So that afternoon shift, as the chief mentioned, consists of two sergeants, 10 motor officers, and two car officers, which will be split up into two groups that will cover seven day a week coverage from 5 p.m. until 3 a.m. Now, uh, the rest of the traffic officers that will go back to the precincts will continue doing what they've done for the last couple years, which is working their 40 hour work week with the precinct to which they're assigned, as well as coming in on their time off to help out with special events uh, and doing traffic enforcement and education on an overtime basis through grant funding from the Oregon Department of Transportation Traffic Safety Division. So I want to share with you guys a few stats just to kind of help shed some light on our situation currently, how it's been in the past, hopefully answer some of your questions before you even get the chance to ask them, and then we'll be available for questions after that as well. So when I first came to the traffic division in 2008, we had about 35 motorcycles and about 10 to 12 cars. So that's a pretty robust traffic division. Over the years, it's dwindled for one reason or another, usually because of staffing needs. And as the chief said in February of 21, the division was disbanded all but our lead investigators for fatal crashes and a few admin personnel to help out with uh, the necessities of keeping the division going at uh, a limited level. And so we're excited to bring back a portion of that division. 
uh, one of the reasons, or a few of the reasons that we're bringing people back is because there's a huge need. All of you know that. The, the city talks about it quite often. We have uh, speed racer events going on. We have fatal crashes that are setting record numbers each year. For example, last year we had 68 total fatalities on our Portland roadways. And of those 68, 32 of them were tra pedestrian related. Now that 68 is a high since 1987. And that 32 pedestrian fatalities is a high since 1948. That's how far back you have to go to get a higher number of pedestrian fatalities in a single year in Portland. Not only that, but hundreds of citizen initiated traffic enforcement requests have gone unanswered. I, don't, I didn't have the resources to send officers to go and deal with those neighborhood complaints. And so unfortunately, we have not been able to address those. Citation and warning and, and citizen contact numbers are way, way down. As a comparison, 2019, when the last full year before COVID, when we had a, a decent sized traffic division, we were upwards of over 27,000 citizen contacts for citations and warnings and, and different contacts. 2020, it dropped down below 20,000. Uh, 21, just over 10,000. And then this last year, only 7,000 citizen contacts for traffic enforcement and education purposes. That's a really low number. And the majority of those contacts are happening on overtime through ODOT grants. So our day-to-day -day operations for the traffic division have not been able to get out there and meet the needs of the citizens in the community. We all live, work, vacation, or commute in this city, and it's, it's our responsibility to help make sure that your roadways are a little bit safer. So, we have some priorities when it comes to this portion of our division that are coming back. And so some of their priorities are, number one, we need to help out the precincts. There's a pretty equal number of calls for service that are traffic related, as there is number of officers proportionally to the total number of traffic officers, if that makes sense. So there is a bottom of it is people just think they're not going to get caught and there's not a whole lot of traffic enforcement out there. There's not visible motorcycles around every corner like there had been in the past. And so, yeah, absolutely. I think that all played a role and we're hoping that with your help, we can get the word out that we're back and we're going to be out there as often as we possibly can looking to have a conversation with anybody who thinks that that behavior is okay. And I think for me, it was uh, it was something where we're always looking at how we can take this finite resource of officers and be impactful on many fronts. You've seen us do it with uh, street racing, organized retail crime, uh, stolen vehicles. And I think uh, for us now, having traffic out there visible, doing the important good work they do, is going to be beneficial to the city. So we're, we were uh, able to, to move forward and make this move. Um, and I think for us, too, when we look at uh, getting folks trained, but also the events that we have in the city. Uh, Rose festivals upon us. A lot of the planning uh, that we do as the police bureau uh, rests with the folks in our traffic division. And um, you know, as we come into Rose Festival, we look at the city uh, opening up and the events that we do here in the summertime, the parades, the races, and things like that. It requires a heavy lift from traffic, and to have them available to focus on that, and also to to train. A lot of the things that they do, they do uh, in partnership with other agencies, uh, riding motorcycles and processions and things of that nature. So to be able to focus on that, do that, keep that proficiency up is also important. So uh, timing had a big thing to do with it. We're focused on driving behavior, not demographics or things of that nature. We're always as an organization looking to reduce disparities. Um, but for us, it's really about having safe streets to the extent that we can affect that with our resources and our traffic investigations and enforcement, we're gonna look to do that. And uh, you know, we're in a different time now. I think we're moving away from uh, you know, some of the, the thoughts of 2020 to more like, hey, we, we as a city really need certain things and we miss certain things and they have an impact on our lives and we don't have them. And I think, you know, when we look back on the last couple of years, there's many things that kind of fall into that category. And I think for a lot of people, uh, traffic would be one of them. Any major roadway that you guys could probably think of within the city of Portland, Gleason, Halsey, Division, Powell, 82nd, 39th, MLK, Grand, Barber, Interstate, Lombard, plus all of the freeways uh, and Marine Drive, all of those major roadways are where an extremely high percentage of our crashes take place. So when we have discretionary time 
and we're not processing a drunk driver for East Precinct or helping on a crash in Central, then we're going to go out and, and do some proactive enforcement and education. And it's, we're going to look for those areas first and look for dangerous driving behaviors within those areas. 